what's the ideal filter you'd like? Uh, I look 32. No, I look 32. That was when I was. What did you look like, Steve? Steve's nose looks funny. It's, it's, it's got like Probably a. Here. Oh, now I've got an eye twitch. Oh, no. <laughs> Lori said she's it. ready. James can see. But it. I know she's not actually ready. Oh, let's get going forever, so let's just crack on. Alright, welcome everyone. Episode 15 of the Closeout for 2020. James Lissman, Community Basketball Manager. Laurie McDaniel, Development Program Manager. And, hey. You go right, and Stephen Adams, starting centre, hopefully still, for the Oklahoma City Thunder. I haven't actually checked if he still starts, but I'm assuming so anyway. Uh, we've got another weekend at level two, so just re a quick reminder to pre-plan your team group as, um, so it's as smooth as possible in terms of entry and exit, and so that no people show up to the game and then are told, hey, actually, you're not allowed to come in. So <coughs> general rule, if you are not specifically invited, do not come to the game. Yeah. Um, and that goes for as well as I know it's hard if you're inside the stadium and you see people w walking up to the door like, you know, let me yeah. in. Uh, unfortunately, no, this is not the three little pigs. Um, so <laughs> we won't be <laughs> letting other people in. We just have to make sure we maintain the government guidelines and so that yeah. we can keep playing. So as tough as it is, know your yes. role. Don't let people in the gym and uh, stick, to, stick to your numbers and we'll get through the other end of this soon. Yep, definitely. Right. On to the Miles Toyota Women's Prem game. Um, first game we're going to talk about is Lincoln University versus Horsball. And in a role reversal of these games in the past, Horsball has come away with a 59-46 to victory over Lincoln University. Rosalie Asamia with 14 and Lucy Brown 10 for Lincoln. But it was uh, Sapphire Wido 14 and Fran Edmondson 13 that um, led Halls one to a, into a better half and the Green Machine came away with the victory against LU. Yeah, no, they were down, I think, at half time or just before and then had a much better second half, whereas normally they've sort of been in it and then given it away. So, um, yeah, yeah it's good job, Green Machine. About the right time to start playing Indeed. better Indeed. this season. <laughs> uh, in the other game, North Canterbury, they had a 22-1 to one run across the middle two quarters to grab the lead from UC. Mary Golding, I mean, it's the usual suspects here, 36 points, Ezra McGoldrick, 19 for North Canterbury. For UC, same for them as well. Hannah Mastruski, 29, and Tessa Morrison, 21. They helped close the gap for UC, only nine points in the second half, but UC, uh, sorry, North Canary was able to fend off the challenge and stay perfect on the season. Final score, 98, 72 to North Canary. So matchups this weekend coming, 12th of September, 12-10, court two, North Canary versus Lincoln University. Basically, a, a practice match almost sort of thing. Mm -hmm. North Canary's locked into number one, Lincoln locked into number two. But on Cal's court one, it's Halsall and UC, both tied in standings at the moment. Winner will go through and grab that third spot to play against Lincoln University in semi-final week. And loser's season will be done. So I think it should be a very, very good game, mm. that one on court one. In the men's uh, prem, North Canterbury led um, once in the game with uh, North Canterbury taking on Gators. Gators came away with a 107-86 to 86 victory over North Canterbury. Um, Ethan Rusbatch had 13 and 19 rebounds, and Nat Connell with 16 points and 9 rebounds. Or 30, or 33 for Ethan. What did I say? 13. Oh, sorry, Ethan. <laughs> um, 33. Um, the sweet shooting of Matt Mashewski, however, uh, 34 points, 9 of 13 yeah. from 3. Is that good? <laughs> I, I'm going to say that's a pretty decent 3-point percentage there. And Yosef Nottenbelt with 17 and 9, who was the MVP for the game. Oh, 6 assists. Help Gators keep the inside track there, and um, Gators came away um, with a 54% shooting percentage from the three point yes. line, which so, is, as a team, quite a good stat. Yeah, there. so good job, Matt Mastucci. The rest of the team also shot pretty well, but mm. he was outstanding. Uh, for my, the next game here, when you give up 65 points in one half, it's going to be very, very tough to win, which is exactly where a, an undermanned checkers team found themselves. Tommy led by 20 points most of the second half and easily ran away off this game, 115 to 91. Top performers are Derek Albertson, 28 points, named game MVP. Patrick Roger had 21, and checkers they were led by Jordan Duggins, 26, and Sam Riley's 18 points, nine rebounds. <clears throat> and in the last men's prem game of the uh, of the weekend, we had uh, Pioneer coming out strong and knew that if they got the win, they would be cementing a playoff spot. 
So uh, they came out pretty focused and ran away with the game in the second quarter. Taylor Britt had 42-12 and 12 for the MVP. Um, and Marty Davidson had uh, eight points and eight assists, which is a nice wee stat line there. And for Lincoln University, Corbin Mason had 21 and 13 rebounds. And Josiah Williams had 16. Uh, where's Ben? Ben Hall? Oh, yeah, yeah, no, um, not 20 points, not even 16 points. So... Yeah, he really struggled, and I guess Pioneer knew that. Yeah, he was yeah, shut him down. Shut yeah, down. yeah, good tactical uh, approach there for Pioneer. You can do the matchups. Oh mm-hmm. yeah, because my name's on it. <laughs> yes. All right, so we have uh, matchups this for this week's Prem's um, competition. So Premier League games this Saturday at one forty-five, we have Atami taking on UC. At three twenty, we have NC taking on LU. And at 4.55, we've got Checkers and Gators. So while you can't go down and watch those games, um, they're being played nonetheless. Yes, they are. <laughs> so what's on the line here? Nothing for a time. <clears throat> they're the number one seed no matter what, so we'll be in the playoffs regardless. Pioneer is number two or three, but it depends what happens. If Gators win, Gators jumps up to the two spot and Pioneer will drop to the three. Checkers and North Canary are both eliminated. Can't make it unless... I don't know, teams say, hey, we're dropping out of the competition full stop. But, right, so, so it's st- pretty not much... statistically impossible, but... But, yes. But then <coughs> it's Lincoln, Gators, and UC. Gators are win, they're in. If they lose, they still have a chance. Lincoln, same thing, if they win, they're in. If they lose, they have a chance. UC has to hope, they have to win and hope that one of those two teams, at least one of them, loses. If they both lose, then um, UC will be the number three seed. Gators will be four, but... Key thing is, UC need a win to stay alive, but they also need Gators or Lincoln University to lose to sneak into the playoffs. If all three of those teams win, then UC you will be joining Checkers in North Canterbury watching or following the playoffs from afar. Yeah. All basketball people need a James in their life um, because if I'd had to work that out, guys, it would have been an absolute yes. disaster. So thanks for that, James. That's fine. Um, so on to McDonald's, Thompson and Whelan Whirly, Whirly Trophy. So next week we're into playoffs. Whelan Division 1 um, this week. Stat just uh, neatly beat out Rangiora 87 to 80. So they will, Stack will play Ashburton while Middleton Grange will host my old alma mater, Rangiora. Thompson Division 1, Christchurch Boys High upset Kashmir. So they'll play Stack. St Bede's and Christ will play for the fourth time this year. Um, and they've all been very close. Thompson Division 2 uh, games. Te pa take on Cathedral at Cathedral. Kaipoi are at Linwood, and Rolleston and Rangura New Life go directly to the semi-finals. Yep. And Whelan Div, Div 2, Lincoln are in the final, and Kashmir or Ellesmere will join them and once they've played off to determine who that will be. Yeah, and it depends on the St Margaret's result on <coughs> Monday night, whether Ellesmere needs a win by one, or otherwise they need a win by quite a few points, I think mm-hmm. around 30 or so. Right. So right. Um, they'll be following that. Glory League Game of the Week, men's under 20, North Canterbury Maroon playing against Salmon Hawks. For North Canterbury, Jacob Pascoe had 35 points, including this nice backward, well, he ran backwards up the court, caught the ball and then went forwards to the hoops, but a nice Euro reverse layup. Hit eight threes in the game as well. How um, did he take? I only, I only watched the main shots, I didn't watch the missed ones. Okay. Um, Benjamin Wildley, he had 22 points, this nice hesitation in trans, and then gets all the way to the bucket. For Selwyn, Max Gorham, one of my um, plays of the week last week, 30 points, this nice steal and breakaway dunk. And Ollie Sutherland had 27 points, this nice finish and transition plus the foul here. But with 73, uh, 71 each, and uh, 74 71 to Selwyn, Wildy was back. He hits this big three to force the game into overtime uh, for North Canterbury. So, first overtime here. Again, <coughs> Selwyn's up by three points near the end of overtime number one. Caleb Murray hits this massive three here, and I want you to especially watch Kenny Babajay, the referee's reaction, like hands on the head, like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I've hit another three to send the game into second period. So, double overtime here. Selwyn, once the game is up, Caleb Murray again makes a key basket, hits the go ahead layup here in overtime two, scored 18 points in the game overall, and North Canterbury Maroon, a tight 100 to 95 in double overtime. Wow. That's the, I can just imagine the uh, teams waiting to come in outside yes, yeah, know, double like, overtime we... in level two. Fun, but great game and well done. Um, on to plays of the week. Here we have Meg Thompson going coast to coast, dribbling through pretty much the entire team and going in for an and one play. So great job, Meg. 
Yeah, my one from Checkers Men's Division 1, Angus Superstar. They were on plays of, uh, Game of the Week last week, I think. Plays of the Week this week. Behind the back and then hits the kind of high-arcing floater. Looks like he was trying to avoid the block or getting fouled. Um, so a tough shot there. Nice handles beforehand, Angus Super. And then Taylor Britt, this one was um, given to me by Rebecca Moon and Sharon Irwin. Beautiful hesitation on the baseline. Shades of MJ against the Knicks, I think. Not quite the dunk and finish there, but <laughs> the same sort of dribbling move and getting the defence other side. But then he does a reverse layup straight over the top of his head as opposed to turning one way or the other. Taylor's got some very nice finishes yeah. around the rim. Yeah. Um, right, on to the supporter spotlight. Um, so this week's supporter spotlight, as you can see in front of us, is basically all the clubs in our competition. So everybody's been doing such a great job in level two of um, monitoring and getting everybody organized yeah. so that we can in fact play our competition games. So a really big shout out to all clubs involved in our competitions. Keep up the great work and uh, big things will be happening for Canterbury yes. Basketball. Yeah, definitely. That wraps up week 15 of the closeout. Good job, good effort. Be cool, be kind. And thunder up, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, 